right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the service this morning. So we are now pretty used to what we call a kind of hybrid um, live broadcast sermon. So we are in the room, less than 50 of us, and right out there, whether you are at home right now watching it live or whether you're going to watch it sometime in the week, we just take this opportunity to welcome you to the service. Um, we begin a new month, and in a new month, we, we focus on renewal. We've been having a couple of meetings as a church and a community and just listening to what are the things that people need and what are the things that people have asked for. And one of, one of the, the, the strongest conversations has been about how do we find places of renewal? How do we find places of healing? Where do we go to deal with the pain and the trauma that we've experienced? And, and just as we come to the end of winter and as we kind of get ready for spring in a month, we can already feel the weather is different and better, but there is a sense and a longing for a time of renewal. And so won't you join me now as we pray together? Let's pray. And so God, as we move into your presence at the beginning of a new month, at a service of communion, we ask, Lord God, that you would search our hearts and touch our spirits, but we want to worship you. And we thank you, God, that it is in every season that you are present. And we pray now, God, that in our worship and our time together, that you would speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, would you stand if you're in the sanctuary and, and maybe even if you're at home, don't you want to take this opportunity to stand with us? You lift me up. You lift me up. You lift me up. You lift me up, oh Lord, you lift me up. You are my strength, strength like no other, strength like no other, reaches to me, everybody sing. You are my hope, you are hope like no other, hope like no other. Reaches to me in the fullness of your grace, in the power of your name. You lift me up, you lift me up, you lift me up.
making all things new. You're working in all for good. For the things of this world, there is hope renewed. And this life that is found in you. that has been set aside for us to gather together as a community for worship. Lord, some of us are here in the sanctuary, some at home, and others will continue to watch the service throughout the week. We just pray, Lord, that as we meet together, we may encounter your love and your grace in a new and in a special way. That, Lord, as you make all things new, we too may experience your renewal and your revival. This, Lord, we pray in the mighty name of our Savior, Christ Jesus. Amen. Won't you please take a seat as I invite Sonia to lead us in the prayer for the offertory. Morning, church. Wherever you are right now, close your eyes and free your minds of any distractions as we prepare our hearts and souls for prayer. Come, Holy Spirit. Come full grace points in the homes of everyone watching the service today. 
even though we are apart, may we be one in worship, glorifying your name and give thanks for all the many blessings in our lives. Loving God, Lord of heaven and earth, this world, our homes, our church and families belong to you. Give us grace to love it as you do. Give us courage to give of ourselves as you do, for the good of all people and of all your creation. Strengthen us to stand as you do, with the vulnerable, the poor, and the sick. Give us wisdom to know when we have enough, and the voice to say enough to all that harms your creation. Lord, renew us every day. Forgive us where we failed you. Help us to think beyond our own lives, to consume responsibly, and to help where we can. Lord, hold our country in your hands. Give our leaders wisdom to think beyond power and to seek genuine solutions so that our people can experience the fullness of life and that there is hope for the future generations. Lord, Lord guide us, the Grace Point community, on where you need us most. Bless the tithes and offerings given during the week and today, that they may be used wisely to help others and to grow your kingdom so more may come to know your love and grace. Lord, Bless Paul as he preaches this morning, and may we be moved to act on your words through him. We pray this all in your holy name. Amen. Tinasio fananaye, Tinasio fananaye, Tinasio fananaye, Tinasio fananaye, Tinasio fananaye, Uchesu maya bonaga la, Tinasio fananaye. Tinasio fananaye, Tinasio fananaye, Tinasio fananaye, Tinasio fananaye, Tinasio fananaye. Tinasio fananaye, Tinasio fananaye, our first sermon of the series in July Justice Month 2021. The disparity between the haves and the have-nots is dangerous. The source of his compassion was his experience. Right now we are at a transition point. As Grace Point, as our nation, as the church globally. Good morning, everybody. Um, it is wonderful for us to be back in church. 
uh, like this, when we can see one another, but not touch one another. Our lessons, this first in this service, are to be found, first of all, in Job chapter 42, and there we'll read the first six verses. And let me just give a little bit of background. You'll remember the huge disaster that overcame Job's life and his comforters that came to be with him and his complaint, his profound complaint to God. And then we have this passage after God has interacted with him. In chapter 42, the first six verses. Then Job replied to the Lord, I know that you can do all things. No plan of yours can be thwarted. You asked, who is this that obscures my counsel without knowledge? Surely I spoke of things I did not understand, things too wonderful for me to know. You said, listen now, and I will speak. I will question you, and you shall answer me. My ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. Therefore I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. And then we read in Philippians chapter 2, where we'll read the first 13 verses. <clears throat> if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. And then in John chapter 13, and could I ask you who are here, if you would mind standing for the reading of the gospel, and um, if you're at home or wherever you are, would you please stand? And it is in John chapter 13, 
And here we'll read the first 15 verses. It was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. The evening meal was being served, and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel round his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped round him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you. You have no part with me. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, A person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you, for he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Would you please be seated and let us pray. O God of humanity, who gave your only begotten Son to take upon himself the form of a servant and to be obedient even to death on a cross, Give us the same mind that was in Christ Jesus, that sharing his humility, we may come to be with him in his glory, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This certainly has been a very difficult piece of our journey. The devastation that has taken place in our country because of COVID. So many families have been affected by those whom they've loved suddenly being snatched from them because of this illness. But those who have had the COVID, struggling with the anxiety of not understanding this illness properly and not really know, knowing where it's going to take us. I think that as a nation, or as a world, let's say, there is a very deep, deep trauma. I spoke this last week to friends in America who are in the church, speaking of having three, five funerals a week and having to deal with the sadness of people 
leaving and not even being able to do the normal rituals that uh, seem to bring proper closure for people. And then, just a few weeks ago, it seems this dreadful, dreadful upheaval in our nation. I was in Phoenix this last week, and um, left angry, sad, confused, scared, and, and I suppose carried my own sense of trauma as we, as a nation, had a kind of horrible flashback to some of our past and some of the deep, deep hatred that seemed so un immovable at one stage. And so the lessons that we read this morning are really, I think, lessons which speak about the seedbed of renewal. Where do we begin this work of restarting, of resurrection, which is really, which is really the mandate of this community? And the passage that I, I've just read to you is, is quite unique. It begins the passion narrative in John's Gospel. And some people think, some scholars think, that instead of instituting the Lord's Supper, the communion, as in the other Gospels, this could be the institution of the Lord's Supper, but in another way. Interesting to imagine that when we share in communion, we're allowing Christ to wash our feet. And so, I suppose that the first place of renewal is, I suppose, very clearly put in that Philippians lesson, where the teaching is about humility. And humility is a strange concept. Because I can't, in a sense, do it consciously. I'm now going to be humble. You understand? Because immediately I do that, I run the risk of being arrogant. Come, let me show you a little bit of humility. And yet it needs to be the controlling attitude of the Christian community as we come into places of trauma, like so many of us are. I was irritated, let me tell you, on Wednesday, because we went into the community and there were some very important people there. There was the Deputy Minister of Justice and the Deputy Minister of Social Development and all sorts of very fancy church people dressed appropriately. 
And then there was this fairly shabby community that also kind of gathered. And we gathered at the Gandhi, um, Gandhi Square in Phoenix. And let me tell you, it's a hang of a place to try and find. You know, you go up and down and all over the place. And I said to the person who was driving us, how on earth are we going to get our way out of here eventually? And there we sat, and we came, and we um, pretended to be humble. And we said to the people, we're here to listen. But then I suppose, as I was told yesterday, it's not really the place of the church to listen. You know, we talk at people like this. It would be interesting, it would be interesting to have a church service where the habits of what we go through week by week, and, and some of it's wonderful, some of it is exquisite. The music this morning was exquisite. But where we have another kind of attitude, Attitude that shifts the power base that's present here at the moment. How would we cope? Would we know what to do? Would, wouldn't we be like Peter? You can't, you, can't, you can't wash my feet. I've seen you heal the sick. I know who you are. You wash my feet. And so I think that the issue of humility is a, is, a, is a difficult journey for every one of us. There isn't a recipe. I can't say to you, add so much of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of this and you'll be fine. But it does mean something like coming into the place of the other and giving the kind of respect that affirms the humanity. And I think that that is something of what happens when Jesus takes the towel and basically says, unless you can do this, you have no part with me. Allow me to affirm the sacredness of you. That leads, I think, and that I think is a step in the journey of renewal. I think, I do think that immediately that takes me to the place that we find in Job. His, his comforters are really quite useless. Sometimes, sometimes as useless as counselors can be. Not that counselors are useless, and please hear me, but sometimes they can be. When counselors, like those ministers on Wednesday, start giving all sorts of advice to people who really need to be able to unpack the, the dreadful things that they have seen in that place, that will be in their nightmares for years and years to come, that they will never forget. I want to just listen to this. I wonder whether this John chapter 30, this washing of the feet, was not something that was like for John, the beginning of this dreadful trauma that he was going to see, the crucifixion of an innocent 
You know what I mean? And he needed to recount this, and it's as he takes out all the shades of who Jesus was that as he tells the gospel, the healing can come. And so the next step for me is to say, I want to turn away from my racism. I can see that it destroys. I want to turn away from those things within me which have the power to cause death in another. And I don't want to pretend that those things, uh, that I'm untouchable by the disease that sometimes happens for any human being. I want to repent. I want to capsize that stuff. And I want a chance to begin again. And I think that that place is the beginning of a new journey. Strange. That death is a new chance. And so let's get back into the passage again. And it, it, it's paradoxical because Jesus comes to Peter really to affirm Peter. And Peter seems arrogant here. Are you prepared to allow Christ, are you really prepared to allow Christ to go to the epicenter of your sin and unpick it and dismantle its perpetual power over you? Are you prepared to go to that place where you're not prepared, really not prepared to forgive? And dismember that power. And then we come to this astounding part of what our gospel is about. Jesus seems to teach us that it is not until we have found that for which we are prepared to die that we really know what life is about. And so I want to, I want to introduce something strange at this point. I don't think that Jesus went to the cross in a resentful kind of way. I think Jesus went to the cross because he loved us. I think he went to the cross because he was absolutely determined that nothing would diminish that love and that cost him everything. And so for us as well, if we are given an opportunity to serve Christ, how do we do it? Sometimes some of the most miserable people on God's earth are Christians. They seem to be so despondent, so perplexed and miserable. You know what I mean? 
Sometimes they even look miserable. You know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Or haven't you had that experience? Maybe it's my experience. Hang, I came away from that Phoenix experience thinking to myself, geez, we came over there like the presence of death amongst those people. And, and, and they were young people. They were full of energy and full of life. And yes, they, they want to make war with one another because they don't want to be poor anymore and so on and so forth. And we came in great solemnity. Well, I think it's important to say to them that what you're doing is not exactly pretty. But there was not a scrap of sunshine that came into that place to offer something new. So when you come into this place and the worship is as exquisite as it was this morning, that's, that's the way I think Christ ultimately, not in a cheap fashion, gave his love. He gave his love with joy to his people. And I think he came to Peter and knew Peter so deeply. Remember, Peter was the one who had the insight to know exactly who he was. And here <laughs> Jesus comes and completely revolutionizes this God. Who doesn't sit in an ivory tower on a throne Surrounded by gold and riches and power and authority. But you've got a Christ who is vulnerable and on the point of death. Wanting to share friendship and service and care and humanity with his disciples. And it's when we allow that to break into our imagination that we begin renewal. Amen. Let us pray. Oh God, we, we come before you as a people perplexed by the agony that has been the narrative of our lives in these last two years, and especially with a horrible, horrible hatred that manifested itself in the looting and the brokenness of the last weeks. We're still so vulnerable, Lord, because we haven't got rid of the ghosts of the past. Our history taunts us and seems to keep on saying to us that we're completely impotent. And so this morning, in your humble name, we want to turn and face that sin and we want to say, you will have no more dominion over us. In the name of Christ, we allow you to wash our feet, to wash away our brokenness, our arrogance, our imprisonment. We pray especially, Lord, for people who lead and we ask that you give to them the kind of humility that is true. Not a kind of false presentation of them wanting to serve when they really are only interested in their bank balances and in all sorts of other important things that they do. We want leaders who will love humanity, who will care for the sick and the broken, who will listen to the cries of the poor, and who will begin 
and a renewal movement. And so finally we want to pray for the sick, for people who right at this time are in hospital or at home struggling to live. Maybe because they've got COVID. Maybe because they've got AIDS. Maybe because they've got cancer. And we want to pray for healing. We want to pray for the healing of our relationships. And for people who are trapped in an immovable depression, we ask your gentle compassion, your affirming of their humanity, your promise of a new morning. Walk with each of us as you use us to heal, to teach, to love. In the name of Jesus, amen. Could I ask you please to stand? <clears throat> Jesus said to his friends, peace I give you, my peace I leave with you. Now, let us give the peace to one another. And I believe that the rules are, this is how you do it, like this. Please don't touch one another. Whatever you do, don't touch. Um, even those of you who are family, don't touch. Um, let's be very strict about this. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Now, who's doing what? Hmm? Thanks so much. Do you want to grab a seat? Some of the children might join us right now. Um, we're going to move now into um, part of a, a, an order of service, a liturgy. There'll be moments where we'll be able to respond. If you're joining us online, won't you actually be part of that as well? And so... The peace and the presence of the Lord be with us, so we lift up our hearts. We, we lift, lift them, them up to, to God. God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God because it is the right thing to do, not only now but always, day after day after day. Day, day after day, day after, after day. day. We thank you, Creator God, that you made us in your image and you breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away, our love for failing and our bodies diseased, you reached out to us again and again, providing healing, wholeness, and new life. Together we say, when the, the flood, flood came, came, you provided, provided an ark. When, when the, the plagues, plagues came, came, you provided safety. When, when the evening came, you provided a pillar of fire. When, when exile came, you provided a new song. Day after day after day, your love remains steadfast, day after day after day. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is your Son, who came to preach the good news to the poor, release to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, freed the oppressed, and announced 
that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick. He healed the sick. Ofodisa ba kulang jwale. We remember that on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us be a community of healers and hope givers as together we proclaim the mystery of faith. This bread reminds us that any life, no matter how broken or sick, or distorted it may be, may be made whole again. The cup reminds us that any life, no matter how empty or lonely or isolated it may become, may be filled again. These are the gifts of God for the family of God. And the family says, Thanks, Thanks be to God. We invite you to prayerfully partake in the Holy Communion. And would you come forward and receive the Communion? communion. The Body and Blood of Christ. 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 Oh, precious is the flower that makes me white as snow. Now the fountain.
Day after day after day, you give yourself to us in two or three gathered in your name, in connection across the miles, and in bread and wine. As we go from this gathering around your table, may we feel restored to your body, companioned by your people and sustained by the power of your spirit as we witness your healing and reconciling work. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and always. Amen. We go in peace to love and to save the Lord.